a martial arts movie podcast. Aha, I threw that shit before I walked in the room. Yeah! Featuring drunken Thai boxer Will. Too bad you will die. The also drunken wrestler Mark. I said I don't want trouble. And drunken karate master Zero. You've lost your boss. And now. Oh. You know, baby. Fists of fail. Uh, I'm not going to waste time today. I know exactly how I'm starting this episode. Zero, I cannot believe you chose this movie to talk about. Why? Why can't I cannot you do that? believe it. I, I never thought in a million years I would ever even, not even talk about this movie, mm-hmm. or like the first movie, rather. Uh, but even to mention it to anyone ever again, because <laughs> okay. I have a strange history with this movie. When I was young, I had bronchitis. What for? Like uh, for about for four to six weeks, something like that. I think it was like ten or eleven years old. I forget how old I was, but anyways, uh, I had bronchitis and I had fevers, I had chills, I was just dying. I couldn't. I had no energy to do anything. But you know, I was just bedridden and horrible fever. All I could do to pass time was just turn on the television and just watch wherever the hell was on. And then next thing you know, I am watching kung fu kangaroos <laughs> just fighting around. And like there's a crazy man with long hair, like just shaking his face, making the weirdest Looney Tune sounds and all the... <laughs> And half of the action scenes, all the action scenes are like, you smear Vaseline all over the screen. <laughs> and then, the and you know, like, as I was watching this, I was just like begging for the commercial breaks. <laughs> I thought you were going like, to say begging for sweet death. <laughs> yeah, I might as well. I'm like, when is this bronchitis going to just take my life? Mm-hmm. And then the movie was over, and I never knew what the movie was called. It was just, oh, it, I never knew what inter- it was called. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, but then a couple. I was like, I thought that was a fever dream. I thought it never happened. I thought it's just like I my my literal fever was like overtaking my brain. So I went to whatever time passed, couple couple years, months, whatever uh, later. I went to Blockbuster Video, and I'm just walking down the aisle, and lo and behold, there are kung fu kangaroos on the cover of. Warriors of Virtue. I'm like, oh shit, that's the fucking fever dream I just watched. And then I was like, all right. Did you rent it? No, I watched it already. I was like, fuck that. (laughs) I thought maybe you would be like, I need to see if this is real. It does it, you know, was, were you just watching some strange hallucination? You know, when you put on the movie, would it actually be different from what you remember from being deathly no, sick? No, no. Well, 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 hey, well, actually, since you're saying, saying that, I, let me, I'll jump ahead a little bit. But no, just but to rewind, uh, I pulled the, the box, the, the back of the box. I'm like, yes, this is definitely the movie. All right. I know it exists. I never have to watch this again. Mm-hmm. And now that I'm 34 years old, <laughs> you're like, hey, let's watch Warriors of Virtue. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> It's all yes. hitting me at once again. Yes, it's- yes. I'm uh, I'm the I'm the bronchitis coming back to haunt you. <laughs> Maybe I never actually got off my deathbed. Maybe this is this all one big fever dream ever since. I'm like, mm-hmm. uh, like a um, like I'm a near death experience. Cause uh, man, I cannot believe we are talking about this. Uh, Warriors of Virtue. It is uh one of those movies that was late 90s um was kind of a i guess like a a kind of a cult classic for some people but very very much a cult classic this movie did not do well financially or commercially at all (laughs) no but uh zero why are we talking about this (laughs) well as with all things i'm always trying to find interesting films to discuss things that are maybe a little different or weird in the martial arts space, because we could talk about Hong Kong Chinese films up the wazoo and just never detract from that path. And again, I'm kind of lurking around Tubi for things to watch. I saw this, War is a Virtue. I always remembered it in terms of the title and the concept. Kung Fu Kangaroos. Yeah, it's so strange. 
And I see people every now and then say like, oh, I love that movie. It's got martial arts, it's got kangaroos, Ronnie Yu, Bride with White Hair, directed it. So I thought, all right, well, let me give this a chance. And it's weird. It's, um, <laughs> it's a movie that a bunch of doctors wanted to make. <laughs> so, I mean, that maybe that speaks for itself, right? Uh, yeah, I was watching the behind the scenes and, you know, like the, it's like the second line of the, 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 the behind the scenes. It was like, oh yeah, it was, this is not made by any filmmakers with any, any, anyone with filmmaking experience. It's just like four physicians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they just like, oh, well we had the story in our mind. We want to make it a thing. But before I continue dogging on the movie or the story or whatever because i can easily do that i want to say i am in support of original ideas i i i <laughs> okay I, let me let me just put that out there because like hey this isn't based on i mean technically it kind of is based on like the like some taoism stuff but it's not really at all it's just like it has a word tao in it Sure. Well, well, Tao is the magical world, our hero. I was going to say Ricky Gervais, Ryan Jeffers <laughs> gets transported to, right? Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, yes, you're right. This is an original, I guess, a quote unquote original idea. But somebody, I'm thinking some doctors, saw the Ninja Turtles, they saw animatronics, they saw martial arts, mm -hmm. and they probably wanted to capitalize on that idea. It's different. You know, you have five Kung Fu Hank kangaroos versus four turtles, but I'm sure there was some influence there. Yeah, you know, I was, it was easy to draw the connections to TMNT. Uh, another side of it, I was looking at it was, I mean, this is the 90s. I, I did remember around that time, there's like a huge glut of these kinds of movies with lots of animatronics like The Dark Crystal or um, I was really thinking about Never Ending Story. Like I just like I remember yeah. watching this, watching both. Now I watched Never Ending Story, like all three movies as a kid, and those also felt like fever dreams. <laughs> but like those are intentionally uh, supposed to feel like that. Versus that, like this, it feels like let's take the Never Ending Story, but add kung fu in it, but not so much kung fu that you can make sense of what's going on. Just enough so you could be like, I think that was Kung Fu. I don't know. <laughs> Someone cut some frames. <laughs> oh, oh boy. Oh, boy. Yeah, we'll get into that. So what's this, what's this movie oh, about? Well, okay. what's, right. what's the series about? Oh, that's right. Where, well, for so, so for some people, myself included, maybe you too, I had no idea there was a sequel to this. I, because I, I, we're not only talking about The Warriors of Virtue. We're talking about part two yeah. The Return to Dow, the 2002 yeah. Two. Two sequel. As yeah, well. yeah. Well, let's summarize the first movie because whatever the synopsis I make up of the first movie, it can kind of apply to the second one too. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. They're very similar in terms of story. So there is a kid, a white boy, who uh, gets transported to the world of Tao. And here there is, like you said, there are kung fu kangaroos, but there's also an evil madman played by Angus McFadden. McFadden, yeah. I, I, I keep want to say his last name is McFadden because I, I feel like his last name is a typo. Dyslexia, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's my <laughs> dyslexia kicking in. But I'm like, mm, no, your last name is McFadden. No, but uh, Angus plays this uh, very memorable villain Ooh, named boy. Komodo. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Man, we, well, mainly I make jokes at lots of actors' expenses when they overact or they ham up their performance, and I generally say, oh, they're probably on cocaine. And, man, this is just another coked-up performance. The guy is going all in. I believe, oh, it's, yeah. I believe it's only his third film mm -hmm. after doing, or, well, this is his third film with Braveheart being the yep. first, his, his big one. So... To see him go from this really uh, award-winning film, well-known, and then into this, it's just like, wow, you're you're hoping you do not, you know, shy away from the the Hollywood system, like you're trying to put your stamp out well, there, because 
He's going overboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but it, in the best way possible. Oh, but yeah. yeah, he so Komodo Angus McFadden plays Komodo, and he is uh, trying to steal the life life force out of these life springs that are all over the land of Tao, and he he's doing so. And he's basically making a life a living hell for everyone who lives in Tao. So the our main character Ryan, he uh, also ha- brings with him a book, a manuscript of Tao. And if he reads it, it's supposed to grant Komodo some sort. Like it's supposed to grant whoever like some extra power or whatever. Yep. Um, it has magical secrets behind it, and Komodo wants it. And that's really it. And and, and, and along the way, Ryan gets Com- kidnapped a lot. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand why Komodo wants it. Like, can't he just take the life? I mean, he essentially takes the life force like yep. towards the end of the movie. So what's the purpose of the manuscript? Well, I, I think it's because it was the last life spring. And, you know, it's, it's supposed to extend his life. But if it's the, if it's the last life spring, then he still has a, a ex- expiration date. So I think the manuscript's supposed to grant him unlimited power. I don't know. It's not well explained. They just yeah, that's what I was confused that. about. I thought I kept on missing something, but I, I yeah. feel there's a few plot holes in this one. See, see, I don't think plot is why this movie has a cult following. I think there is a genuine, uh, genuine uh, uh, group of people who actually watched this movie as a kid and actually got you know. I actually kind of liked it. You know, there, there's that that group is like, oh, you know, like, this is my childhood. I remember watching this all the time. I had it on VHS. And, you know, like, uh, maybe this is their introduction to Kung Fu. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, and, that's fine. And this is perfect for young boys because you, you have the surrogate character. He's a young kid. Strangely enough, he's a young kid who has a disability. He has a gimp leg. Yep. And... For some reason, when he gets transported to Tao, his leg is fixed, mm. and it feels like that's a huge missed opportunity for them to say people with disabilities could learn to um, like still be useful minus their disability. Because that's that's generally the archetype for that sort of story. Sure, yeah. He would come in the into 90s? yeah. Yeah, he would come into Tao he would be all down on himself because of his leg, and then he would realize he's actually some sort of expert, like, I don't know, strategist, because that's what's happening in the beginning of the movie. But that never comes back again. He's just like, well, my leg's fixed. Not a cripple (laughs) anymore. And he starts, like, doing the shuffle. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, he just goes all over the place. And then the second movie, they just completely... They're like, eh, he, his, his leg's fixed yeah. permanently. <laughs> exactly. I don't know. It's the power of Tao. And just to <laughs> talk about the second movie story a little bit, almost the same plot. He gets transported to Tao. Instead of Komodo, you have a new guy named Doggo. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> is that really his name? Was it Doggo? Oh, you're right. It is. No, it's Doggun. No, his name's Doggo. Oh, Doggo? Doggo? Okay, sure. Okay, it's sure. Doggo. <laughs> Doggo. Played by uh, Kevin Smith. Who, Not that Kevin Smith. <laughs> no, yeah, like he looks really weird after. I, I'm sure he he looks like really skinny for some reason. I'm sure he's just preparing himself for Clerks too. <laughs> <laughs> sure. No, no, but uh, no, that's played by the other Kevin Smith, who I remember was the guy actor who played Ares in uh, Xena, Warrior Princess. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, I, it's yeah, been yeah. so long. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, "Oh, that's that actor." Yeah, I was like, "I, I was like, oh, he looks familiar." But anyways, um, he is just all. He's like the opposite of Angus Mc, McFadden. He is just like sleeping through every scene. Yes, yes, <laughs> very forgettable villain. But yeah, yeah. Oddly enough, Warrior of Virtue is surprisingly interesting. So I watch these back to back again, mm-hmm. and they address a lot of the things from the first movie. It's kind of interesting that it's really a direct follow-up because you have ryan jeffers returning things are different and the warriors of virtue are different because yes. they do not have a hollywood budget anymore this is direct <laughs> to i mean it's direct to video but it looks yeah. direct to tv mm-hmm. because there's no more animatronics yep you got the saddest looking 
like makeup <laughs> on these actors. The reveal just lands with such a wet fart. <laughs> like, oh my god, the Warriors of Virtue are back at uh, oh. Oh God! <laughs> what is that? Yeah, I, I okay. I don't want to disorient our our listeners, but uh, yeah, let's let's talk about the let's go back to talk about the first one. Before, sure, like, sure. We talk about the second one even more because it, it really is kind of like night and day. And I do feel like part two is it is a the answer to the you know like like a an answer to the question that you know like what if the first one was you know better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's a question that no one asked because like the first one was a financial flop and no one watched it and no one or, like unless they had bronchitis like me <laughs> well it was not only was it a financial flop story-wise and just sitting with it it's yeah. so boring it is a very boring lifeless movie, yeah. mm-hmm. it's really the sets the mm-hmm. the animatronics yeah. and then mcfadden's over the top performance and then if you're if you can look past the the frame you know the cut frames in the action it's like it's not bad but you know for people like us who really want to see it it's distracting but maybe as a kid you don't really notice that those sort of details yet yeah yeah i mean it i remember watching it again to reiterate my story it, it's just it was hard to make out it, it, yeah. it, it especially if you have a fever it's it's disorienting and it's like it really does feel like a, a blur imagine watching this on a 90s television <laughs> fit, for, yep. fit for from a four by three ratio it's like oh my god it's it's nauseating um but yeah like again i was saying you know like half of these people like the, the fans of this grew up to appreciate it maybe got got something out of it and i'm and actually part of me thinks that this is one of the contributors to like the current furry generation <laughs> that's my suspicion it's like maybe we, ha- we didn't have a lot of that I'm, I'm being dead serious by the way it's like they're like anthropomorphic kangaroos and well you could all... say that about the turtles too yeah but like these are actual furry <laughs> like oh furry well animals. sure 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 okay but anyways what i'm trying to say is that uh you know uh, the animatronics uh or not, maybe not the animatronics the fact that everyone in the first movie is fighting in suits is actually, in my opinion, like even leagues better than like even the, the original TM, TMNT movie because they're doing way more complicated stuff. Like I actually commend that this movie for it. They're doing um, a lot, even more acrobatics, like way more. Uh, There's a lot of wire movements. They filmed a lot of in, wire. They filmed in China, and yep. you know you can see the Chinese influence, you know, very, very heavy Chinese influence compared to what was going on in the American Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles where, yes, you know, the first one had that Hong Kong crew because it's the gold, the Golden Harvest co-production, but mm-hmm. the action was so toned down compared to a regular Hong Kong action film, strangely yeah. enough. Because I, I, think it's, I think it's the idea that it's for kids, so you can't do that kind of action for kids. Mm. So to go back to this movie, when it comes to the action... Um, a lot of the action scenes have cut frames, meaning that let's say there's 24 frames in a second, and each one of those 24 frames is a unique image. Mm-hmm. Now, what's going on in this movie is let's say that of those 24 frames, they removed 12 of them and doubled the frames to fill in the gap, and yep. it looks like the imagery you're seeing is really choppy. On yes yeah and Choppy. that's really unfortunate because i think this could have been decent as a children's martial arts movie but as people who look at these things um you know with keen eyes it's distracting it's just yeah. so distracting to watch a fight scene with that with that 12 frames a second sort of look yeah i mean we're watching it on pretty high def and uh, no, now you know today and mm-hmm. that's how why we're discussing it today and I, I'm going to just assume that they never went back and they're like, oh, let me, you know, go back to the original Masters and just, like, remove that. Maybe they just lost that footage and that's what we have today. It's, I mean, it's probably most, it's probably lost because mm-hmm. this was a creative decision. 
And yeah. to go back to it, exactly. I think because this is technically a children's movie, the fact that we have all this on-screen violence like this, they and the fact that they designed this choreography like a normal you know, martial arts movie, they probably realized that, oh, we need to tone this down somehow. Hmm. And the decision was like, well, what if we make it a little choppier so it's harder to make out? And this probably sounds stupid, but I can imagine that's exactly what happened. Like, I, if, yeah. if you don't see the action clearly, then the MPAA will not give you PG thirteen. They're like, oh, okay, it's not, it's not so clear. We can, we can tone it. We can give it a PG rating. Sure, I can. I definitely think there's a credence to that theory. I also, but I also think that this was purely based up for style. Like they purely did this for the the look because. The, the movie has doesn't shy away from some brief moments of blood, not a lot, not gratuitous, but there's moments of you know blood leaking out from the the, the mouth, mouth, and then even some swearing. Freaking, that was like the weirdest scene. I remember watching that as a kid. I'm like, why are they fucking swearing out of nowhere? Like, <laughs> fuck that. <laughs> uh, oh, shit like, happens, right? <laughs> yeah, shit happens. Yeah, I was like, what? Um, so like, yeah, I I think that. Yeah, maybe maybe for censorship, but some I think it's just for a stylistic reason. But like, man, towards the end, it gets like so bad. Well, the and entire like, fi- finale, action finale, is <laughs> just cut frames. It's a shot at a lower frame rate. But when I was yep. looking back, because I was trying to re-edit it to make it mm-hmm. faster, mm-hmm. and you can actually see in certain shots its normal speed versus the cut frames. So I have yeah. a feeling somebody yeah. went back in post to cut all these frames out and just do it this way so yeah you know it's yeah. just, it's a creative c- decision that sucks for martial arts fans like us but yep. this is what we got yeah 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 i mean <clears throat> i mean again so i guess we can move on to talking about the second movie uh you know because it does feel like like i said an answer to the first movie what if we took the things that didn't work about the first movie and make it its own dedicated film. Um, you kind of like almost rehash a lot of the same story points, but this time also Ryan is kind of less of a helpless damsel in distress character. And he's more active in the story. Yeah. He's actually part of the action. Like these are all things that like would in theoretically fix some of the problems that people might not have liked about the first movie. Except for the fact that the Ruse still have no personality at all. <laughs> well, they're, the Ruse are barely in this movie one. either, in the second yeah. one, yeah. Well, it's interesting because in the second movie, the story and the writing grew up because he's now a teenager. He's He and his friend from the first one, uh, Chucky, they're now fighting in a wushu competition in Beijing. Mm-hmm. And they randomly stumble upon the world of Tao again yep. and this time there's a princess who needs saving because the evil doggo wants to take over i don't even know what he wants he just he's bad guy yeah and it's it's a little more mature and it feels like i mean it's only a couple of years after this is 2002 so you know a couple of years after 97 so like if you were a fan of the first one you know you know grew up for you so it's kind of nice that it got a little more mature, but it still feels like a teen movie. Yeah. yeah. Te- oh, teen, yeah. I mean, both of these movies are children's films. But yeah, you're right. I do think that the second one slightly matures it up a, 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 a tiny, tiny, tiny smidge. smidge yeah. yeah. But um, like I said, it, it's like the answer to the question that no one asks. So like, like, do we really need to try to fix this? None of the filmmakers, no one who is attached to the first project is in the second movie. So it's like, who, who felt the need to like take this IP and run with it? I like, think uh, <laughs> one of the writers returned. I think that's oh, so. He's the he's to blame. I see. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's. I guess that's fine. I mean, it's still. It's. I don't know if I'd say it's a better movie. It's. It's like it's. No, it is. It is most definitely a better movie. Watching these back to back, this the second one is just oh, so no. much easier to sit through. The characters oh, no. are a little more likable, and it doesn't it doesn't feel like it meanders as sure. much as the first movie. Yes, the sets are cheaper, the costumes are cheaper, but it's it's just yeah, it's it's nicer to sit through. And then surprisingly, the action is much better. And yeah. mm-hmm. it's funny when you look at the action in the second movie. If you were to take it out of context, you would think like, oh, this is 
serviceable, like direct to TV action. Like it's not yeah. bad. But Television. when like yeah, but when you compare it to the first one where you can't really make it out because of the cut frames, this is so much more refreshing. And I think I have to commend that they did a good job with mixing between the the teen actors who are still performing some of the martial arts, like mm-hmm. whenever they cut up to do some close ups, and then they cut to the wides, and then you got the stunt people doing the longer, more complicated takes. But the editing is good because they know how to kind of cut back and forth so you can see the kids every sure. now and then. Sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> as we're talking about this, I just realized that uh, the original Warriors of Virtue is my Beverly Hills Ninja because like, I have that. It's like me trying to... Conv- you you and Mark trying to convince me that Beverly Hills Ninja is not a bad movie, but that's your nostalgia glasses. Like. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, it's not. It's not a bad movie. It's not this one. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, versus like, I mean, I still actually think the first movie is terrible. I, I do. Um, it's but how could how could you have nostalgia for something that's uh, linked to like p- potential trauma for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, as I was on my deathbed, it, it didn't seem so bad because <laughs> the second movie doesn't have Komodo. And he is easily the best part about the first movie. He gets so many fucking laughs from me. Because he is... I don't even know if he's coked up. Like, if you watch any behind the scenes, he looks he looks like the most chill person. Yes, he really <laughs> like does. Very calm and collected. But as soon as someone told him, like, oh, this is a children's movie. Like, oh, I need to go 180%. <laughs> so, I don't know. I, really, I do weirdly appreciate the first movie because he is just on another spectrum of just so almost like on a so bad as good kind of performance he's overacting up the wazoo and the second movie i think it kind of yeah sure other things are improved right we don't have the choppy frames we don't have we have more clear action the camera work in the action scenes is actually very much simpler but in the best way possible. Yes. Like it's clear, yes. it's static, like static in a way that you can see what's going on. You just focus on the actors, do the performers doing the thing. But I, I did find like, uh, you know, our villain kind of wooden in comparison. Well, he just, was, he has no character. That's the problem. He's yeah. just there because he's evil and he's supposed to be when they're, when they come back to the real world, surprisingly, that's when it gets fun because they're fighting in this area where there's just all these performers and all these people. And that's probably one of the more exciting set pieces of the film. And then I was surprised how much, how long the fights went in the second movie compared mm-hmm. to these tiny, tiny snippets we got in the first one. The yeah. second one, yeah. it's like, wow, they're, they're still fighting. <laughs> this, is, this is great. Like, yes. I, didn't, I didn't know fight scenes could go this long for a kid's movie. <laughs> well, I don't know because uh, the, the, the final fight in the first movie actually goes on for a while, but you don't you don't even know what the hell's happening. Yeah, because it's it's I mean to to kind of jump ahead, but not not really spoil anything. It it's like five five concurrent fights happening back to get back, but all the ruse look exactly the same. And then they're all fighting Komodo times five because he's multiplied himself. You're just like, what, where the fuck are What's we? What's happening? Going on? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. With the freaking and then cam. and then the cut frames. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, it's it's like you're just kind of waiting for something that actually visually makes sense to happen. So you can be like, okay, is the fighting over? Okay, good. Now we can move on with the story. Um, but that 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 fight does go on for a while. Uh, but here it's like the second movie is a lot more clear. Uh. We don't have Komodo, but instead we have a uh, silent, bald Chinese guy yeah, with what, red hair. <laughs> what the hell was that? I love this guy because he just appears and he just poses. He's he guy. He's like I don't even know how to describe it. Did they did they say who he was? Because I have a theory who he is. Uh, uh what? What's your theory? There is a little person in the first movie who betrays, uh-huh. um, yeah, Jim Jeffries, whoever the, <laughs> Jim Jeffries. the that kid's name is. Ryan he betrays Jeffers. him, Ryan uh-huh. Jeffers, and he's got the he's got orange hair. He's he's bald in the top and he's got orange hair in the side. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering if he's a mutation of him. So the wait, so the white guy turned turned into a Chinese guy. <laughs> uh, that that was the only connection I could have made if he was supposed to be from the first movie or not. I I, I don't <laughs> think so, but I noticed the orange hair and he was bald at the top, so I thought maybe he's just a mutated version of him. Maybe I don't know. I, uh, that's a very, very, very a much stretch. a stretch. It's a stretch, but that it's. I love that guy because he just appears. And all he does is just pose and make weird faces and it makes me crack up. And that's the only like moment of joy I really got out of the second movie um, in terms of the uh, the so bad it's good quality. Uh, otherwise, I didn't care too much about the story, uh, obviously. Like, I feel like neither of the stories are very interesting. So it's like really about the action. And I'll give you credit. Uh, the second movie has better action. It's still a kid's movie, so it's kind of toned down and like, you know, and there's, it's not very violent at all. Um, and by the time we get to the very end, when it's, you know, uh, essentially a one versus many, it's like, okay, it's fine. It kind of ends pretty quickly after that. It kind of shits the bed with the action. In the yeah. End because yeah. everything before that is decent. And then the, you know, some heroes return and you think it's going to be this big action spectacle, and it is <laughs> not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that, that, that's, I don't know. Is there anything else I want to say? Because I actually want to, I would love to talk about them more. Yeah, I, no, I, I, I kind of s- spoil them in a lot more detail. So Yeah, I was going to say, them. yeah, we're, 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 we're inching towards wanting to go deeper into the action. So let's do it. Let's mm-hmm. talk detail about the action, maybe a little more stuff with the story so if you want to hear the rest of this conversation you can you should consider subscribing to us on patreon because there you can hear the entire discussion we're going to go into detail about both films with the action maybe not as much as the first one because we've kind of said everything (laughs) we didn't like with it Mm -hmm. so yeah consider subscribing if you want to hear that yeah yeah okay but enough said let's talk about my fever dream Hey guys, thanks for listening to the podcast. We're at the point where we give our recommendations, but there's a whole wealth of audio you would be listening to here if you follow us on Patreon. There you can listen to the entire episode, including an exclusive action breakdown of the fights in the movie. And now on to our final thoughts. That's... (laughs) Oh boy. (laughs) And that's Warriors of Virtue, The Return to Town. Yeah, one and movie. two. Wow. Wow. Yeah, Man, yeah, yeah. We like we we like went through that whole thing. Crazy. Oh my God. Craziness. The, craziness. This was also another fever dream. Just talking about this again. Oh, talking yeah. about this. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Because uh, I cannot believe I dedicated this much time. Because you know, like for every one of these episodes, mm-hmm. uh, we go. I go. We go really deep into them. Like I have to, we have to watch the movie. Maybe watch it two or three more times afterwards just to break down the action, like really find out all the background information on this movie, on the movies. But this one's like every minute I spent on this, like I don't, I still don't believe this exists. I just watched this like three, four times and I still don't believe it exists. And here we are. We're done. So after this episode releases, I've never talked to you about this movie again. I think they're trying to reboot this so are you serious oh my god uh, i think i think <laughs> i saw that somewhere i could be wrong but Don't be spreading rumors man <laughs> <laughs> oh man so would you will. would you want to see would you want to see a remake of this oh fuck yeah <laughs> oh god <laughs> but what? i want it i want it with like even worse animatronics <laughs> i want it like yeah like halloween store kangaroo masks i want it to look <laughs> Like it's melted to their faces. Yeah, but but this time, like I want it to run on like three frames a second. Oh my god! <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Oh boy. Uh, but yeah, so, you're asking. So, Will, how was how was it for you revisiting this oh my god. fever dream? And then, did you even know there was a sequel? I did not know there was a sequel. Uh, you were one who who told me that, and I was like, oh no, I'm dreading this. And watching it, I was like, all right, it's better in some regards. But like I said. It's like it's it's the thing that no one asks for. <laughs> like, why do you need a re? Why do you need a sequel? Why do you need a remake? I don't know. It's why do thing. we need kung fu kangaroos? Ah, well, we got it. <laughs> we yeah, gotta live I, with it now. 
I mean, I'm wondering if the legacy of this would have been different if it got some traction. Like if, because you know, like I can imagine that if this succeeded, they're gonna do like a a serial, uh, like you know, a Saturday morning cartoon with this and go really oh, right. far with this. Yeah. But they didn't obviously get any commercial success at all. This is this movie is just this series all in all is just not interesting. It's just not. It's it's just these. these it's kind of played out in a lot of ways because it's literally just never ending story. Never ending story. I was going to say also kind of like Narnia, but Narnia actually like has, you know, twists and turns and like, you know, there's, there's a lot of intrigue in there too. This is, these movies are too simple. They're well, not interesting at all. The issue too, is that the titular characters, the warriors of virtue are not interesting. There's yeah. nothing interesting about them. If like even with the turtles, the Ninja Turtles, like they have yeah. their each, they have their own personalities. But even if you take that away, you can say, okay, maybe they have they have cool weapons, right? They each have yeah. their own distinct weapons. And in here, like like the fire warrior of virtue, like sure he's got fireworks, but then like after that, it's still like you know you need to give them something distinct to remember them by, and they're scary, horrendous animatronic <laughs> like realistic kangaroo faces are not gonna win anybody over yeah, yeah. who'd have thought that going to your local physician and being like hey what's your idea for a movie who would have thought that would be a terrible idea <laughs> <laughs> but that's ex- ex- pretty much what this movie is it's like yeah, like it's it's not very well thought out i don't think yeah you're right like the characters are not very distinct they're not memorable that's part of the selling point of a kid's anything really like kids want to have something to latch on to um you know uh, you know either you have fun lovable characters memorable characters but those they're not it you know they're they're literal animals so you got to make them cute you got to make them friendly you got to make them something and they're fucking boring so what do you got you got ryan who is like the audience surrogate and he just gets kidnapped the entire <laughs> movie and he sucks um so you really don't have much. I, but as the adult in me, I love Komodo. <laughs> he is like the reason to watch the first one. I'd say just go watch a Komodo compilation. I don't recommend the first movie at all. Like not even a little. But uh, I, I kind of do. Weirdly oh enough, God. I didn't even like sitting through it. Komodo yeah. was was fun, but even even that wasn't enough to. Yeah, yeah. To rec- Why are you for, recommending for this then? <laughs> but I'm kind of recommending because I feel like people should watch it because it's just weird. It's this weird yeah. little thing mm-hmm. that I feel you, you should watch it so you can just say, oh yeah, I, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that <laughs> failed Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle knockoff and it yeah. was written by doctors and I hope a bunch of gynecologists never come together and try <laughs> to make an anthropomorphic animal movie. <laughs> yeah, you, we have urethra and we have uterus fighting. Oh, oh god. <laughs> oh, god. <laughs> um anyways, uh the, the the second movie on the well I I can't recommend the second movie unless you've watched the first movie for context. Um because if you just go and jump yeah. in the second movie, it would just be nonsensical. Um even though it is kind of like a retread of the first movie too. It's almost similar in a lot of aspects but yeah i you definitely don't want to watch the second movie you haven't watched first so it's like all right I mean, it's it's the superior film in terms of just beginning to end and then better action clearer action yeah but it shits the bed <laughs> in the end yeah. Yeah, which yeah. is kind of which is kind of funny to me yeah, it it was the second movie is to a bit of a too little too late kind of um, effect it's like mm-hmm. it's five years after the fact again the first movie wasn't that successful to begin with so it's like they're trying to remedy some of the problems in the first movie on a smaller budget too and it's like eh, it, it's like no, i mean again. i think i think they succeeded with fixing some issues but sure the, some the, bu- but the budget shows and then the ending is not good if it, it was like somewhere in between like the first it, it was a one-time thing and it was like still awesome action like all the problems were cut out made the characters more interesting literally everything that i mean even the second movie still has some mistakes here and there but you know like it's some things need to be ironed out with all these movies 
Um, but I, I just gotta say, like, none, none, none of these movies are very interesting. Like, sure, they're weird. They're weird, but the fact that they're not interesting kind of trumps the fact that they're weird. Like, I don't even recommend it from a weirdness level thing. It's like, sure, they're just sure. kind of not entertaining movies. Yeah, that's all I gotta say. Just, just We need to bring back Komodo and give him a spinoff. And just have a, a, a Komodo movie. That's, well, that's, just give what's his name, James Angus, is it? Angus oh. McFadden. Yeah, just give Angus McFadden a lot more coke. Give him a lot more drugs, <laughs> to, and just watch him ramble in the street. I'm sure you can get something similar to his performance. <laughs>